Hello and welcome to Blender Bite Size. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make this material procedurally in Blender. Okay, let's make a start. For those that are interested, this is my scene setup. So I have basically a plane that I've kind of closed off to make a, 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 a studio area. I've got three point lighting set up. There's one, two, and three. They are all constrained to an empty which I can then just move around and the lights will follow it. I've got my object that I'll be shading and of course a camera. I do also have an area light up here which I can adjust and change. But we'll look at those in a bit to see if they make any difference to the finished result. So let's select the object we want to shade, switch over to the shading tab and enable viewport shading. We're then gonna apply a new material and I'll just press the period key on my number pad to bring that into focus. Now do keep in mind I'm using Blender version 4 for this. I understand that Blender 4.1 recently came out, so we'll be keeping an eye on the changes there. Uh, if you're using Blender version 3 though, I have an alternative version of this video on a playlist on my channel. So do check that out. I'm going to delete the principled shader as we're not going to use that. I'm going to load up a diffuse BSDF and a glossy. BSDF. I'm going to right click. Oh no, I'm not. I'm going to press the shift key, right click on this. No, I'm not. I'm going to press shift A again and add a mix shader. to bring those two things together. I'm going to duplicate that with Shift D and connect this to there and that to there. Now we've already got something going on but it's not quite what we want. We need to duplicate the glossy and bring that into there. And we need something for the factor up here as well so we're going to use a Fresnel node. Okay, let's start making some adjustments. So for the color of the plastic, we're going to use the diffuse BSDF. So we'll just bring the saturation up there and the value. Roughness, I'm going to set to 0 0.001. It's the tiniest amount, but I believe it makes a difference. For this glossy shader, we're going to go for GGX as the distribution. We're going to set the roughness to 0.1 and leave everything else as it is. The IOR on the Fresnel node we're going to leave as it is. The mix shader we're going to drop right down to 0 0.05. And then for this glossy shader, we're going to go for GGX, 0 0.01 on the roughness. And there we should have our finished glossy plastic. So let's take a look at these independently. So the diffuse shader gives us this kind of red tone. This glossiness gives us the glossy. We're mixing those two together with this mix shader. We're adding some additional glossy with this mix shader, but only as a result of this Fresnel node. So those are what all of the individual bits do within that setup. Now we do have quite a lot of light going on here which is probably washing it out a bit so I'm going to move the uh, empty and I might disable the area light and then for the key light drop that down a bit and then for this one over this side I might drop that down a bit too and there you go that makes a difference so the lighting obviously plays a part whenever whatever scene you're creating so just keep that in mind and if I will keep that as it is but I might actually bring that empty back forward yeah 
There we go. Almost like a snooker ball. Anyway, so I'm using the Cycles Render Engine and my graphics processing card. I've got my noise threshold set to 0.1, uh, sorry, 0 0.02, and the maximum samples to 512, and I've got denoise enabled. I'm going to disable that for now, and we'll take a look at the render. Okay, now I did notice that I've actually not disabled the area light in this render. So I need to go up here and disable that from the render. And then do it again. And there we go. A nice glossy plastic material. Obviously or the scene you apply it to or the object you apply it to will play a factor in how the finished result looks. But... I'm quite happy with that for now. If you found this useful, please remember to like the video and of course subscribe to the channel for notifications of future videos. I'm currently working my way through 100 materials, redoing them for Blender version 4, so it's worth subscribing. And uh, if you've got any questions, comments, thoughts or what have you, try and keep them nice. Uh, do pop them below the video on YouTube. In the meantime, thanks for watching.